Hi everyone, my name is Hilary. I am an international student from Indonesia. Also, I am a participant of Community College Initiative Program, and also I will be the host today. Um, today we talk about budgeting and saving skills with hard skills. I uh, thought maybe you want to introduce yourself first. Sure, thanks for having me, by the way. Uh, my name is Todd Seville, and I've been teaching here at Kirkwood for, I say, about 18 years. And one of the classes I, I teach is, uh, is personal finance. And we teach a money and banking class and uh, corporate finance as well. But uh, I have a background in uh, financial planning. I've worked at Prudential as a fee-based financial planner, and also I used to work at uh, Wells Fargo as a financial advisor. So personal finance is one of the, the my most favorite classes that I teach, so I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm so glad that you can come in here and talk about finance. Sure. Um, you know, uh, this is a very important topic. Like, the older we get, the more responsible we should be for our finance. Like, when we are kids, uh, we don't know that our parents that manage our money. But when we are, you know, grow older and older, we starting earning money, also having income, we started realize that, uh, realizing that we need to manage our money. So the first thing that come for the budgeting and saving skill, what is the right mindset for you for that? Yeah, I'm glad you, you brought that up and you, you said a, a few things there I, I want to address. We, we just had this conversation the other day in class, and that is the, the topic of money. And for whatever reason, uh, the topic of money does not really come up very much at the kitchen table or the dining table or any table at all at, at home. And uh, there's a variety of reasons why that is. But uh, it's one of those conversations that, that I personally feel is, is very important um, that, that parents need to talk with their, with their kids about. Um, in our country, as you may know, in the United States, we, uh, we do not rank up near the top of financial literacy. Uh, in fact, we're uh, a little ways down. Countries like uh, Denmark and Sweden and Norway are typically at, at, at the top of, of the list in terms of being financially literate. So in, in this country, financial literacy is, is, a big, is a big deal, and it's making big strides uh, as well. And I think uh, not only having those classes, like a personal finance class that I teach uh, in the school system, but also having those, those conversations uh, at home. And one of those conversations mm -hmm. um, that she had mentioned is, is about budgeting. And uh, budgeting is, is, is something that uh, it, it, it kind of, I think, has a bad rap. It, it, it has bad connotations, mm -hmm. just the word budget. You know, we, we think of budget as being re restrictive. And let's face it, you know, especially in our country, we, uh, we don't like to be restrictive in our, in our spending. We like to spend now and, and pay later. And that's where budget comes in. And so if maybe we, we reframe it, like mm -hmm. you'd mentioned a mindset, if, if we reframe the term budgeting and maybe call it uh, a spending plan, that might be helpful. So what is a budget? What is a spending plan? A, a spending plan is, is really taking a look at the money coming in and, and the money going out. On its simplest, most basic terms, that's what it is. It's, it's managing the inflows and the outflows of, of money. It's looking at your income from all the sources you may have that income coming, and it's looking at all those expenses. And we typically break this down on a, on a monthly basis, okay? You can break it down to be more granular than that, maybe on a weekly basis. But it's a matter of tracking where the money goes mm -hmm. and where the money flows. Yeah, I mean, uh, students, as a students, when we, uh, you know, we have dream goals for our school, also students also have their job sites. Um, do you think uh, what is the primary objective of budgeting itself? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the, the primary objective of, of budgeting is ending up with more at the end of the month rather than less. <laughs> One of the things that, that I like to share in, in, in my class, uh, my personal finance class, is I like, in the beginning of every class, I, I start off with, with an acronym, and I put this acronym mm -hmm. on the board. And the acronym is, is RED, R-E-D, mm -hmm. RED. And in accounting terms, being in the red is not where you want to be. You, mm -hmm. you don't want to be in the red. That means you're, you're insolvent. That means you're, you're negative. You want to be in the black or in, in the green. 
And so what, what I contend is if, if you are red, it will keep you out of the red. And what that stands for is the R stands for, for being responsible. Okay. And uh, let's face it, not, not everybody is, uh, and I, I survey every class, you know, how many people can, can fully say with 100% confidence that, that I am responsible with my money. And I will, will tell you, I've never seen <laughs> all the hands go up in unison. It hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. But being responsible um, e is, is being being educated, sure. and, and and that's probably the easiest part is is educating, you know at, at least at, at a high level having a basic understanding of, you know what a budget is what we'll talk about in here today mm -hmm. and and what are different types of investments what's a stock and a bond and a mutual fund what is that what are different types of insurance, w what about credit and, and a credit score and a credit report and how do I build credit and in all these different topics you don't have to be an expert in everything but you have to have you know a good base knowledge in, in how this works and then the D is, is being is being disciplined and, and this is where budgeting comes into play, being disciplined with your money. And so one of the assignments that, that I give my students is I said, all right, um, if, if for the next several weeks, know this. I, I, right up front, I said, you know, you, you go to the gym, you might have a, you know, a physical fitness trainer. I'm going to be your financial fitness trainer. And here's the exercise that we're going to do. You know, here's, here, here's, our, <laughs> here's our reps, is, is you're, you're going to create a budget or spending plan and you're going to show me on a weekly basis for the next five weeks where that money goes mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to suggest to you that, it, that no you do not have a you know a hole in your pocket and you don't have a puncture in your purse it's not just falling out and where did it go it happened it, it falls out at places like at Starbucks for a six or seven dollar you know uh, coffee drink uh, and, and a lot of other places and this is where many students become enlightened in terms of, wow, I didn't realize, I, 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 I guess I drank that much Starbucks, I, that's where it goes, or I, I, I guess I didn't know I, I, I bought those kinds of candy bars at the checkout line in the grocery store. That's very enlightening, and that enables people to kind of put their finger in the dam when it comes of, you know, money leakage, that we, we, we need to stop some of that and, and prevent some of that, that spending that we don't always feel conscious of. That is a good acronym that I have heard, like, guess I learned to, to manage my money. So broad, responsible, educated, and disciplined. But for me, uh, I think mostly like young people, students, we cannot be consistent sometimes. So what do you think that um, challenges that mostly students face to be responsible, educated, disciplined? Yeah, that's a wonderful question, you know, and First of all, awareness, um, money awareness, mm -hmm. and I, I think if, if you did if you did a uh, a, a survey and, and asked uh, people students, you know how how money aware you are, just kind of like the responsible, educated, and disciplined. If, if people are really honest with themselves, they they may find themselves saying, you know what, I could probably be a little you know more more money aware. Um, so I think that's a, a first step, and, and that's why we do this, you know. Uh, budgeting, money tracking uh, assignment. Um, so that's a good baseline to start at. And then, you know, a, a, another activity that we do in this class, and I think whether you're in the class or not, everybody can, can uh, subscribe to, is we talk about ways to save. Ways to, to, to save money. Because when it comes down to it, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're having trouble making ends meet at the end of every month, you, you have a couple choices. You, you can either make more money or you can, you can spend less money um, or you can, you, can, uh, you can invest money that, that's making more money for you on your behalf passively. And usually for students, it comes down to I, I'm either going to you know, be working more hours or get another side hustle um, or I'm going to be looking for ways to, to, to save money, to cut expenses out. And so we, we have deep discussions on on those types of things and it, it's great to see collectively what people come up with in terms of you know what I, I do I really need all those subscriptions 
you know, to to Hulu and Netflix and Prime and Disney, and, and it, it, maybe I could cut back on that. Maybe I could take a look at, uh, you know, going and buying in bulk or, or buying generic rather than branding. Maybe I, I don't need to eat out all the time, and if I do, where's the coupons at? Mm-hmm. So there, there's certainly things that we can do and also other practices that we can get into in terms of coming up with a, a disciplined habitual method of, of saving money. And, and maybe we can go there later too, some ideas. Yeah, to have the um, money awareness, which is we need somebody else to help us to know, to observe what we really need. So uh, we go into the tips and techniques that we can share to us as students, uh, how to start it so we can have the money awareness. Uh, like the how we started with the categories first, what is very important for us for the budgeting? Yeah, well, categories. Mm-hmm. We can talk about categories. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, like like we said, you know, accountability. And sometimes um, having an accountability partner, whether it's a, a professor and, mm-hmm. and you're doing this for a class or a, a friend or a partner or a parent, you know, having a, and, and making it kind of, you know, fun if that's at all possible you know you know let, let's 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 have a little contest and see who much how much you know we, we can save so making it real and, and, and relevant and, and fun in terms of uh, categories that you can break down it, it's uh, you know you can take as deep a dive into to breaking this this out as, as you want and there's many tools out there too mm-hmm. some some people say okay I'm gonna I'm gonna write this down in a little notebook of all my expenses or I'm gonna get an Excel spreadsheet or uh, there's many apps out there that can help you do, do your budgeting and they can make recommendations on those categories but look at it like this you have income and you have expenses and your, your income is going to be from your your your, your job. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have, you know, a salary or you're going to have a wage. Maybe you're going to have some tips. Maybe you're going to have a bonus. Uh, it also could come from maybe an allowance that you have family members that are helping you with. Uh, maybe it could come from, from other sources. So you, you list out your sources of income mm-hmm. and you look at that on a, on a, you know, a monthly basis. This is what they will be. And they, most of those are more fixed. Uh, it's when we look at the expenses where we can break those out into being fixed expenses and, and variable expenses. And what I mean by that is typically most people's highest expense is going to be a fixed expense and it has a name called housing on it. So your rent mm-hmm. or your mortgage payment. Typically for most Americans that's going to be your, your, your highest expense and it's a regular expense and you're going to have it every month. So you list this out. You would also have things like maybe a car payment maybe uh, some other uh, student loan or another loan that you have that's going to be a fixed payment that you'll pay. Um, You might have some subscriptions like Mm -hmm. we talked about. Um, Those could be fixed. When we get down to variable expenses, this is where we have an opportunity to improve. So food is 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 a variable expense. And certainly these days with inflation being what it is, you know, we, we've seen the prices, you know, of, of food go up. Uh, and, and so we can make a change. We, we, can, we can switch from steak and go to chicken or we, we can switch from, uh, I don't know, um, gosh, you know, orange juice or whatever it is to, 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 to something different. So we can have an impact there. Um, utilities, we know, especially living in Iowa, that that's going to be a variable expense mm-hmm. too. But, you know, there's things that you can do. What if you don't leave the lights on all the time? What if you lower the thermostat at, at night and when you're away from home? Um, things like this. So looking for those ways that we, we can, you know, save money, particularly on the on the variable expenses, is pretty helpful. So fix expense and also a variable expense. Um, do you think an uh, emergency fund um, can be the fixed one or the variable? Wow, she came prepared with some good questions around <laughs> here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. I really am because 
statistic the, the numbers change uh, you know every month on, mm -hmm. on how few Americans have an emergency fund or even know what you know well what's well, an emergency fund well it's like it sounds it's it's a fund in case you know life happens mm -hmm. and in the form of an emergency and and they happen a lot for various reasons and typically I like to say sadly um, you know most Americans are you know one emergency away from bankruptcy mm -hmm. And so an emergency fund is, is having, and I'm talking about cash or a cash equivalent, something that, that, that's liquid that, that I can access right, you know, right away because, you know, I had a flat tire or my, I hear this all, all the time, a, a car breaks down, things break, things happen. Um, it may be a medical expense that was unforeseen. It, it could be a number of things. There's different rules of thumb. Well, how much should I have in an emergency fund? you know, at least one month, and that's the bare minimum. Uh, most experts would suggest you better have at least three, maybe six. Some people would like to have 12 months, and I'm talking covering all your expenses of an emergency fund. That's not always feasible for people to have 12 months emergency fund stacked up. But I always encourage my students in my class, that listen, one of the first things you need to do is, is create that emergency fund and and let's let's shoot for at least one month and then once we reach one month let's let's stretch it into two and let's let's make it a triple and make it make it three you, you got to have an emergency fund so what is the percentage uh, of the uh, our income for the emergency fund if we can do it like one month or the 12 months What's the, the percentage of, of uh, how yeah. much I should save mm -hmm. or what, what would that breakdown look like? Mm -hmm. it, it would look different for, for, different, for different people. But what I would suggest is when, when you are creating your, spend, we'll call it a spending plan. It, it just sounds better. It's, it's, <laughs> it sounds more sexy than, than budgeting, right? When you're creating your, your spending plan, what I really like to see when students do this is I want to see... I, I want to see emergency fund right there a, as one of the expenses. In fact, make, make it a, a, a fixed expense if you can. Do whatever you possibly can to make an emergency fund priority one as, as, as part of your fixed expenses. And then you get into other things about, I want to save for a house, and I want to start saving for retirement. That's, that's, but emergency fund it is number one. In terms of percentages, I don't really know. It depends on the situation of the person. But the recommendation is, is, is you make that a regular, you know, a fixed expense and you contribute to this like you would any other bill. Yeah. Um, also in our generation, I don't know about your generation, but uh, we know a, a, a famous term called FOMO, fear of missing out, <laughs> which uh, it can be uh, the big impact of our finance management. So do you have any advice for our young generation like us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, beware of the FOMO. Yeah, <laughs> no go to the FOMO, right? You know, the fear, and it's so true, you know, and, and I would love the, to look up the history, you mm -hmm. know, of, of that word. How long has the, the, the FOMO acronym even been around? The concept's been around a long time, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of it has, has stemmed from uh, investments in, in recent years. You know, we, we've had uh, a lot stronger interest of, of, of younger people um, getting involved in investing. Especially with with technology, I mean, you you can you can download an app on your phone and you could be straight, you know, trading stocks and bonds and <laughs> oh boy, Bitcoin. That's a whole nother that that's a whole nother podcast. Mm -hmm. But you know the 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 ability to to get in and and and, and buy and sell and investments and and trade is is much more prevalent these days, and also the conversation that comes with it you know lots of people out there love to show and share how much money they're making mm -hmm. um you don't typically hear you know those people you know sharing how much they've lost uh, and, and, and how devastating that can be but typically with you know social media you know being in everybody's face all the time and wow well, i'm missing out you know i'm not i need to get involved in that and I, I think that FOMO, um, sadly, 
can can uh, can be detrimental to some people. Uh, nobody wants to miss out. There's great opportunities. Everybody wants in. You know, look at the you know from a few years ago when we had the big craze for the the meme stocks known as uh, what was it? A, uh, I just made a movie on this. You know, AMC and and uh, GameStop and you know that that whole social media craze turned investment, you know, kind of, uh, I don't know, what the, I don't know what call it epiphany. We, we call it the, the, it, it blew up. Um, but FOMO is a, it's a, it's a big thing. And, and it comes down to having that mindset, having that discipline, being responsible. Um, don't get yourself caught up in the, in the social media frenzy and, and, and be cautious and be careful. Like you say that uh, the highlights here are um, the income also expense. Do you have any method? Because I have heard about the method like 50% of 40% uh, 40 also, well, 10%, something like that. Or do you have any suggestion for the methods? Yeah, I mean, I, I brought some information right here. <laughs> I didn't want to get into a lot of this because it's, you know, I want to keep it, keep it kind, of, uh, kind of fun and, and ad hoc. But, you know, there's a... a, a Lots of different methods. Everybody's got one, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, the one that I, uh, I'm looking at here is called the 50-30-20 uh, budgeting rule, and that means you could you could break your income down into into three sections. So you would have, you know, 50% of your money coming in. We need to allocate that towards th these. These are your needs. Okay. That this is this is we, we these are things we have to we we have to have food and and shelter and we have to have transportation we have to pay for insurance, so fifty percent and then and thirty percent could go to wants and maybe another twenty percent to savings. But the, honestly, I wouldn't get hung up on the numbers because every si situation mm -hmm. is unique and mm -hmm. and different. But one thing I I would note is. It, 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 I, I don't oversimplify it, but but so many people do not live within their means. They they just don't do it, and there's 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 this thing called the um, the income effect, mm -hmm. and 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 this is something that um, it, it's a marketing term, and I like to use it in a finance class, and and it's very common, and it goes something like this that. The more money you make as you progress in your career and you're elevating and you're being promoted, the more money you make, typically the more money that you start to spend. Well, now I have more money. So oh, that means I, I can have a new car and I can have a new house mm -hmm. and, and I can have new this and new that and better this and let's keep up with the Joneses m mentality. And, and we're kind of encouraged in this country, uh, globally, I think, to, to spend notice that we're, mm -hmm. we're encouraged to spend this is one of the reasons really why I love teaching both a marketing class and a finance class and I blend them together we are encouraged from all angles and all sources to spend 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 because you're worth it and uh, <laughs> sometimes I like to say you know well, just because the billboard says that you're worth it doesn't mean you're worth it if, if you have money saved up and you have cash and you then you're worth it Th then you do deserve it. But if, if you don't have the money saved up in your bank account, what makes you think that you, you, you deserve it? Just because some marketing messages say that you deserve it? Oh, I mm -hmm. deserve it. Well, you, you deserve it if you've worked for it and, and, and you've earned it and, and, and you've saved for it, then yeah, perhaps m maybe you, you, you're worth it now. Th th you are worth it because you, you have it in, in your account that, that you can pay for. But uh, that's... That's a whole other conversation as well that you can dive into. And it goes back to that analogy of being responsible, being mindful, being educated, and, and being disciplined. Just because the messages out there in, in, in the land of marketing and sales and advertising say that mm -hmm. you're worth it and, and you deserve it, you need to first maybe look at your bank account and ask yourself that question. Do you deserve it, and, and, and are you worth it? And, and, and then maybe you can decide to make the, <laughs> make the purchase, you know. Uh, yeah. So it's very related to the money awareness again, going back to the money awareness, uh, how the money going to be spent, yeah. spent, right, something like that. Well, th there's th there are two different things, you know, th money awareness and, and, and money accountability. Mm. 
there's many people out there that, that are fully aware of their financial situation, and they still choose to not hold themselves accountable. And, 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 and uh, we, we, <laughs> I need to be cautious about what I, what I say here because I get pretty passionate in, <laughs> in, in class about these things and talking about it. And that comes down to, you know, what, what, uh, what, what is your character like? How responsible of a person are you? Um, you again, many people are aware of, of what they should be doing, um, how, how they should be managing money, uh, but they, 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 they choose otherwise, and, and they, they find themselves in a, in a hole, a, a deep, dark hole of, of debt, and, and that can be very hard to get out of. And sadly, in this, in this country, um, you know, it's, it's uh, well, it's, you know, uh, you know bankruptcy, I, uh, uh, somebody else's problem. No, that's your problem. That, uh, that's the problem that, that, that you created or circumstances in your life created. It's not all everybody's own doing, mind you. You know, things happen. Lawsuits happen. People lose jobs that happen. I mean, divorces happen. All these things happen. You know, and, but it, it's the, the things that happen that people have some control and, and some decisions to make that, that they could maybe be a little more responsible, accountable, and mindful of, of making it. it it's, 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 it's those folks that, that really need the, the, the lesson and, and accountability. That's a good thing to learn about uh, the different man different between money awareness and money accountability. Um, also, I want to ask um, from you personally, uh, how do you estimate estimate your time to do the budgeting? How do you estimate the time to do the budgeting? The the most amount of time that is going to be put into a budget is when you actually sit down and, and, and create a budget. And again, according to some hot statistics right off the, uh, right off the internet, and again, it's, they could vary. That's why mm -hmm. I don't lean too heavily on throwing statistics out at people mm -hmm. because they change on a daily basis. But uh, more people in, in this country actually have a budget than what I originally thought. In fact, I can tell you from the source uh, here, it says that, uh, oh, what was it? Um, and say over half of people in this country have a budget. But it, it, it really takes some thoughtful time to create that budget. And, and again, that budget, that spending plan, this, this is the projection of, of, of what I anticipate. And then at the end of the month, we'll, we'll look at the, you know, uh, at the actual numbers, mm -hmm. projected versus actual, and we're either ahead or we're behind what, what, we, what we budgeted, what, what we projected. And, and that's when we might need to make some changes. But really putting some time into creating that budget, you know, you could put a budget together in less than 20 minutes. It doesn't take a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of time. And it's the tracking of the budget. It's saving the receipts. It's writing it down in, in, your, in your notebook or putting it into your app. And, and, and some of these apps will do it automatically um, for you through your financial institution. It's once you set one up, you can modify it as you go month over month, but it's the tracking of that, that spending is, is where it's at. And that doesn't take a lot of time. Great. Um, do you think we should um, include the task, task uh, into our budgeting as well? Taxes? Uh -huh, taxes, yes. Uh, it depends on the type of tax you're talking about, uh -huh. and it depends on the uh, if you're self-employed or not. We could get mm -hmm. into that. Um, yeah, you you should include that depending on on your on your situation. If you're having tax regular, if you're working for an employer, it's not that's not withholding taxes. Yes, you you should absolutely have that as part of your expenses, and it should be a fixed expense. So taxes are definitely a, a consideration, depending on your employment situation. Okay. Mm. Uh, also, recently, I, I believe that in social media, we also notice that people get more aware about retirement planning. So as a student, um, do you think we should like planning <laughs> from our start right now? or? <laughs> I laugh, I smile. We, we just had this conversation in class today. Okay. 
and, 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 and any student who's had me in, in that class, or any class for that matter, I, I get pretty excited. I get pretty passionate about things, and, and, and I, I beat the drum and the desk on retirement planning uh, in that class. And I, I, I might have some calluses mm -hmm. right here from beating that, that desk so much. Yes, retirement planning, you know, and, and I tell students, I, I'm aware, you know, I, when I was, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, I was sitting in the seat that my students are sitting in now as like, you know, retirement planning wasn't really at the top of my mind so much, but uh, it, 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 it should be. And certainly you would know that the sooner you start your retirement planning and start contributing to a retirement account, whether it's an employer account or an IRA of some type, the better off you'll, you'll be. That should also be part of your spending plan, part of your, for your budget. Um, pay yourself first is, mm -hmm. is a concept that, that uh, really needs to be addressed more as well. Pay yourself first in that emergency fund. Pay yourself first in your retirement fund. Pay yourself first in, in, in your, maybe another category could be a, a house fund. Now, you need to prioritize you know, there's always so much to go around, Todd. Yeah, we, we got you. If you have a credit card debt, you know what? That's kind of a priority. You do not. And I, that's another that's another desk beater. Let me tell you what. Yeah. When we talk about credit cards, if you can't pay that off on time and in full, you that's that's not a tool you should have. You're, you're not mm -hmm. ready to use that yet. You're not equipped to use it. But again, life happens. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we got to do these things. Of course, that's going to be a priority. You, you don't want to be paying, you know, 20% interest uh, on anything. So you need to really, you know, think these things through. That, that's why, you know, it, it's, it, it, it takes some mindful, analytical um, decision-making to decide what's the best thing I should be doing with my money right now. I'd love to have all these other goals of house and retirement and, and retirement saving and, and oh, let's have spring break. Th let's throw that in there too and some summer travel and, and, and whatever. But mm, let's prioritize our, our, uh, our spending plan as well. So I can hardly hear that as students we need to understand how to expense our income even though maybe like me, I guess I got my scholarship, I need to be uh, smart at budgeting. So my, this is my last question. Um, sure. What is the most inspiring uh, famous person that for you to stay uh, stable for the finance? finance? I love that question. And, and I smile, man. I, I, and I ask my students this. I, I ask them if they've ever heard of this person before, and, and very few people have. And, and I wish more people would, 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 would know this name and know this person um, because he's not only a, a master uh, uh, at managing money, investing money. And I, I'm delaying because I know a few people listening to this may know who, who I'm going to mention here. Um, but he, he, he's, he's an inspiration, he, he has uh, character, uh, he has integrity, he is a role model, and uh, he's, 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 he's almost 100 years old, mm -hmm. and his name is Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is, is, um, is a billionaire, and he made his money through investing, through investing, and he's been doing it for a very long, long time, and to my knowledge, he's, he's still living in all places. Here's a billionaire, mind you. Here's, here's a, 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 a billionaire. He could live anywhere in the world. Uh, but he still chooses to live in Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska mm -hmm. You know, four-hour road trip away from here. And uh, a house that he bought back in the 50s. So he, he perfectly, actually, perfect example to, to talk about in budgeting. He, uh, he, he still... He lives a very modest lifestyle, certainly well below his, his means, and gives some really good sound uh, advice and sound counsel. He is an inspiration when it comes to financial planning and financial literacy and certainly uh, investing. So Warren, Warren Buffett is, is, uh, is a model and a mentor mm -hmm. for me and for many others. 
And one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm most proud of, and it's been many years since we've done it, I'd love to do it again, is I've taken some of my students, my finance students, uh, hop in a van and drive four hours and attended uh, his meeting for his, um, his fund called Berkshire Hathaway. They have an annual meeting they, they hold in, in Omaha. And I kid you not, people come from all over the, the world, not just the country, and it's certainly not just you know Nebraska and the Midwest. They come from all over the world. And as long as you are either an investor in his fund, a journalist, or a student, you're welcome to attend. It's free. And you have thousands of people that, that are in this auditorium in, in Omaha. And, and he sits up there in a table like this for, for several hours, and he, he, just, he just talks about his, his thoughts on the economy, the thoughts on the investments in his portfolio that you can invest in. He, he answers questions from the crowd, and he has such a, a, a wisdom to, to share that it's, it's just, uh, we're fortunate to have someone like, like Warren Buffett out there. Great. Um, one last thing again. Sure. <laughs> um, could you say a powerful statement for us as students about finance? Could I say a powerful statement? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, about money for students. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I got many powerful statements. It okay. just depends on the specific topic. But one of the things that I say, <laughs> I teach face-to-face classes. Mm-hmm. Of course, we live in online land now too. So I teach a lot of online. Uh, I teach a lot of online classes. And one of the things that I, I like to do for my online students, since we don't have the opportunity to have a real dialogue, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I, I leave little videos, little f- funny, cheesy little videos. And one of the things I like to end with, and we'll end this now on this, is uh, <laughs> uh, be smart with your stash and cool with your cash. And if we can just, you know, a little rhyme to keep those things. Yeah. Am I being smart with my stash? Am I being cool with my cash? Mm. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's a fun saying, but let's let's think about it. And if we're not, maybe we need to hear those words a little bit more. Thank you so much for your time to share your thoughts. And uh, it is very insightful for us. So I thought, thank you so much for your time to s- share your thoughts. And thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Thank you. Thank you.